Black holes have long been a source of much excitement and intrigue. And interest regarding black holes will surely grow now that gravitational waves have been discovered. Invariably, the one item that is almost assured to come up are the largely gruesome ways in which black holes might theoretically affect human beings and the Earth itself. One of the best known effects of a nearby black hole has the imaginative title of spaghettification. In brief, if you stray too close to a black hole, then you will stretch out, just like spaghetti. This effect is caused due to a gravitation gradient across your body. Imagine that you are headed feet first towards a black hole. Since your feet are physically closer to the black hole, they will feel a stronger gravitation pull towards it than your head will. Worse than that, your arms, by virtue of the fact that they're not at the center of your body, will be attracted in a slightly different direction than your head is. This will cause parts of the body toward the edges to be brought inwards. The net result is not only an elongation of the body overall, but also a thinning out in the middle. Hence, your body or any other object, such as Earth, will start to resemble spaghetti long before it hits the center of the black hole. What would happen, hypothetically, if a black hole appeared out of nowhere next to Earth? The same gravitational effects that produce spaghettification would start to take effect here. The edge of the Earth closest to the black hole would feel a much stronger force than the far side. As such, the doom of the entire planet would be at hand. We would be pulled apart. Equally, we might not even notice if a truly supermassive black hole swallowed us below its event horizon as everything would appear as it once was, at least for a small period of time. In this case, it could be some time before disaster strikes. But don't lose too much sleep, we'd have to be unfortunate to hit a black hole in the first place and we might live on holographically after the crunch anyway. Interestingly, black holes are not necessarily black. Quasars objects at the hearts of distant galaxies powered by black holes are supremely bright. They can readily outshine the rest of their host galaxy combined. Such radiation is generated when the black hole is feasting on new material. To be clear, this material is still outside the event horizon which is why we can still see it. Below the event horizon is where nothing, not even light, can escape. As all the matter piles up from the feast, it will glow. It is this glow that is seen when observers look at quasars. But this is a problem for anything orbiting, or near, a black hole, as it is very hot indeed. Long before we would be spaghettified, the sheer power of this radiation would fry us. For those who have watched Christopher Nolan's film Interstellar, the prospect of a planet orbiting around a black hole might be an appealing one. For life to thrive, there needs to be a source of energy or a temperature difference. And a black hole can be that source. There's a catch, though. The black hole needs to have stopped feasting on any material or it will be emitting too much radiation to support life on any neighboring worlds. What life would look like on such a world, assuming it's not too close to get spaghettified, of course, is another matter. The amount of power received by the planet would probably be tiny compared to what Earth receives from the Sun. And the overall environment of such a planet could be equally bizar. Indeed, in the creation of Interstellar, Kip Thorne was consulted to ensure the accuracy of the depiction of the black hole featured. These factors do not preclude life, it just makes it a tough prospect and very hard to predict what forms it could take.